So here we are, we're at 3,000 feet altitude, we're at 247 knots airspeed, and perhaps we would like to investigate the leaks on the aircraft and the business of what we have under our different fittings. For that, we have this multiple isolator capability. If we had just carried out a leak test using the key we mentioned earlier, we would know that we have the situation where we have a leak, perhaps identified, but we would not know which of these ports is actually causing the trouble. So if we go to the multiple isolator key, it puts us into the leak measure screen, the first two lines, which you'll perhaps recognize from a few moments ago. But on the bottom, we have four equal signs and four equal signs, representing these four statics and four pito connectors. And if this was a very large leak, today it's looking very good, of course, just here in the studio. But if we wanted to say, well, let's try closing port number one to see if that changes the leak rate. When I press this, it changes from an equal sign to an X indicating we've just closed off that line. Perhaps the leak has been found to be in that line. If not, maybe we close port number two and so on. No, maybe we decide that it's a pitot leak, so we close port number five or port number six. If we get totally desperate, we can use the nine and close all the ports to see if we have a problem internally in the instrument. You can then open all the ports whenever you wish with the zero key. Puts them all back to the equal sign, meaning we've opened them all again. So there we are. That's been a useful way of describing the multiple isolator option and remember you can have as many as just one and one or two, three or four depending on the number of isolation lines you need for your application. To go back to the running mode we press the control key. Okay, what haven't we demonstrated? Well, most of the things perhaps, but perhaps a word or two in terms of the operation. At the moment, we're on the uh, console, the front panel keypad, but if we wanted to go onto the remote terminal, at the moment it says console control, meaning we're operating from the front panel. If I want to transfer the control from the instrument itself up into the remote terminal, I merely press the 2 key. This is the second of the control panels, this is the first. So if I press the 2 key, I now have all the information I had before onto the remote terminal, and to go back again, very simply, I press the 1 key on the keypad, and I'm back again, and this says control console. I don't really need to say any more than that for this demonstration. Of course, in practice, you can use whichever of these you prefer. Back to the business of uh, discussing the keys. We've talked about the uh, limits and the units and how we can change those, but I'd like to just illustrate that point to a degree. If I take my cursor through to airspeed, and you see I am at the moment on 247 knots airspeed. Perhaps I want to go to an airspeed of 500 knots. So if I key in 500 enter, ah, it only allows me to go to 450 knots. Why? Because the limits of this test set have been set to 450 knots. So if I ask for anything larger than a limit, I will get this situation happening. I can, of course, go to the limits key, go to the aim for altitude, airspeed, sorry, airspeed maximum. As you see, it says 450 at the moment. If I change this to, let us say, 600, enter, come out of the limits. If I now say I really did want to go to 500 knots, enter, there we are. 
It's allowed me to do it, no problem at all. The limits are there for your protection, or at least for the aircraft that you are testing. So we urge you to think carefully before you change the limits. By all means, use the facility. But perhaps use it in a non -volatile, in a volatile mode, so that when you switch the test set off at the end of your day's operation, it will forget that limit change, and it will come back onto the limits that we set when the instrument was shipped from the plant. If you want to change the limits permanently, because our limits are not acceptable to you, that's fine. Read the handbook, it talks you through exactly how to do that and change them in the non-volatile memory so that they are always there. Okay, just a few more little points. We talked about the fact that we can change the values of the altitude and the airspeed and we can also of course do exactly the same by going through to the command lines on the simulated and command lines for pressures instead of altitude and airspeed aeronautical units. The one I wanted to point out to you out of interest is the fact that at the moment we are looking at the QC pressure. By default this test set shows you the QC pressure, the differential pressure between pitot total and pitot static. If you want to look instead at the other absolute pressure, if you wish, the PT value, then you can via the key we discussed earlier, the toggle key. If I press this key, we are now looking not at QC, but we're looking at PT. And again, back to QC. No problem at all. You change between the two just as you wish. Similarly, we did talk about altitude rate and airspeed rate. At the moment we have an A in front of the rate figure. If I press the key called altitude rate and airspeed rate, this key will change now and show you the speed rate and you'll see that the demand value has automatically changed to 300 knots per minute because that is the desired value at turn on for the speed. When you begin it's always in the altitude rate position. OK, we've, we've covered probably most of the uh, main key functions there. We have other functions hiding under these buttons. Maybe it doesn't show too well on the ca camera, but I can briefly talk to you about them. We have the ability to change the LCD by pressing Shift and LCD. We have the ability to check the battery level by pressing Shift and Battery. We have the ability to go into the remote control mode, maybe via a PC or via Bluetooth. We do offer the ability to work this, air, this aircraft test equipment without any wires at all. You can go wireless using Bluetooth and this instrument is kitted for Bluetooth and we'll describe that soon. Going on we have the ability to have either indicated airspeed which is what we're looking at the moment or true airspeed. If you go to true airspeed you will be asked to input the operating temperature at the moment so that the true airspeed can be computed and equally in front of the I will do it shift and T it says enter the temperature let's assume it's approximately 20 degrees centigrade now instead of reading whatever we were I've already forgotten but we now have the T in front of airspeed meaning this is now true airspeed and that will remain there until I change back again indicating that we're not looking at indicated airspeed so shift and there we are back again okay uh, other things we have a high resolution capability shift and six key is the high resolution and you can get an extra digit on inches of mercury the date EV map just to talk about that for a moment, when this test set has been in operation for perhaps years, the control valves within the equipment will change their characteristics a little. You are able to go into the EV map, electro valve mapping, and it will recompensate the system to give you superb control again because of the wear on the seats of the control valves will change over time. So that's the main 
items that I wanted to discuss with you. We're going to stop just for a moment to enable me to, to change over to discuss remote control. Okay, so we've covered most of the buttons now and I'm going to go on and talk in a, a moment or two about, very briefly, because of time, uh, the remote control capability from computers. Um, it occurs to me when I hear the pumps that I have forgotten to say to you that internally in this equipment we have fabulous pressure and vacuum supply pumps. We have a pumps with a life of 5,000 hours guaranteed which provide all the vacuums and pressures you require for altitude and airspeed. And you've heard perhaps during the demonstration that they start up and they close down irregularly. And this is because they only run when necessary. If there is no need for the pump to run, then the electronic shuts it down. It gives us very good life. They're very quiet. I'm not sure how it's going to come through on the recording, but they certainly don't drive you crazy, as is the case with some uh, pumps in this business. OK, now let's talk about remote control. I've already pointed out to you that this port is the RS-232 port and if we wanted to operate this equipment from um, a PC we have several uh, capabilities for you. The first would be that you could take an RS-232 lead from here to a PC and come on to our screen here which we call the AdWin software option as in Air Data Windows testing software. And we can, if this lead is made uh, solid, we have the ab ability then to control altitude and airspeed and rate of change. We give you this ability to have analog instrument displays if you so wish, and it can be useful. Um, and internally here you have all the capabilities associated with the stored programs and the storage, even better storage in fact, of the equipment results of your testing. In addition to this hardwire solution, of course, in the manual, you have the ability to use the RS-232 port yourself. We supply you with the instruction codes to achieve all the different changes. But if you don't want to write your own operating software, then the AdWin software here is a good solution. I'd like to say to you all now that I hope it's been of value this demonstration of the MPS 31C talking you through the capabilities of the instrument and I hope we've covered the majority. I'm quite sure when we switch everything off I shall say I should have mentioned such and such. Please excuse me. Thank you very much for your attention.